Welcome to the Bear Pit Pod, episode 14, 14. season review. Last Edi- of season, is edition. it? Is it last, last of the season? season? Yeah, it's the last of the season. The season, but yeah. is it last of... It's not the last. Right, okay. Right. We'll just leave it at that. Um, Craig, mm. we record this today being in the top 60 of the podcast charts. It's amazing, isn't it? For sports. What the, what the fuck's going on? We're trying to figure that out, aren't we? Because, <laughs> we have no um, idea. We have literally no idea. We're trying to figure out the algorithm on this one. Reviews plus listens plus generally it's being be the, the best podcast. For Stoke. Stoke. <laughs> well, I was going to say the best podcast, but fine. Going. And we're in the top 60. In the world, is that right? For sport? Yeah, for sport. We we were six. We were 56 at the minute. That's pretty good. But that's not even our peak, is it? We're 53 we're earlier. We're 53 earlier, so it's quite responsive. But yeah, yeah we've been up and down and maybe one of the reasons that we have flown so high is because of the reviews yeah. we've got more I always promise to read them you do so we're going to smash through you've got them. loads to get through here I've got loads to get through and people know as well that we're giving this shirt away this it's the big one today after I've read these reviews we're going to give it one. away so catching up from where we were uh, Harry Loves and Bula says properly enjoyed this pod lads keep them coming Potter's Independent Trader says would you rather fight, fight a duck sized horse or a horse sized duck do you quickly that five stars for the name as well I like the name. That's that's class. Well, got to be a duck-sized horse. It's small. We've had this on it. Um, yeah, yeah, we've won yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, Stoke City Ten says sexiest pod out there. Also love the dedication from the team to make sure there's always a game day experience vid available. As I'm a fan from Sheffield, can't make every game. Lovely. Alan Craig always make great points too. Bodie One Kenobi says absolutely love the podcast. Always tweeting Elliot to put it on YouTube. Love the most recent episode debating Hughes in or Hughes out. I'm with Elliot though. Hughes out. Um. Dave Matthews seventy nine says after dep- such a depressing season on the pitch, the p- this podcast acts as my therapy. Great content with likable presenters who obviously care a lot about. Fortunes of the Potters. Keep up the good work. That's lovely. That's lovely. Likeable. That's nice, isn't it? It's nice. Rachel loves Bear Pit. Five bloody stars. <coughs> Class Pod. Pornhub Premium says listen to it all the time while I'm revi- revising for GCSE exams. We're on Pornhub. Jake Full says Class Podcast. Talk sense and all things Stoke. Great work, lads. Matthew Bliss says thanks for the updates and things Stoke related. Hope I win the shirt. Rich SCFC says excellent podcast. SCFC three two three two three two says great to hear the proper opinions by proper fans. Keep up the good work. Caden1572 says that you have a great podcast and channel. Hope Stoke signs one of the transfer season. I hope I win the shirt. Shultop89 says, simply put, this is the best podcast. Red Hot Pie says, great listen every week. Varied opinions and the highs and lows of being a Stoke fan. What more could you ask for? Call Us All says, top podcast, but get an intro. I, I don't like intros. Intro music, music. you mean? You um, can lose someone on if you've got shit music. Maybe, I'm maybe. Not, I'm not best skills at making good tracks. I'm, that's why I'm not making, you know, top 40 Songs. Yeah. Maybe when we get a few more listeners and they're cemented, we can I kind just of like bring getting into in. it. Like, just jump into jump it. Into Let it. us know uh, if you want to. We'll put it out there. Yeah. Song. Do you think we need an intro? I, or, or is I, our voice just going from jump straight? Yeah. Into just, it. Ju- you just get straight in. Yeah. And then lastly, Sam B two eight says every Stoke fan should listen to this podcast. Every bit of Stoke related news told by the fans. Right. We are now going to pick a winner for this shoot. Well done, Al for reading. You smashed with them. Not a word out of place. Right. You, cl- so you close your eyes. Okay. Wipe the screen up and down. Where is the screen? There's the screen. <laughs> no, 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 you've knocked it off. You've broke it already, Craig. If you want to see this this comedy, look at the YouTube version of this. Yeah, look Could at the YouTube eyes, yeah. right. No, I'm, I've got to get back on it now because okay. you knocked it off. This is podcast gold, this is. It is. Right, got it back. Okay. Right, just in the middle of the screen. Just do, look at the middle. Just do that. Do a just, flick. And, one, and another. And one more? Yeah. Right. Keep going. Do one more, just to for good measure. I'll put your finger somewhere. Freddie. So if you're Freddie, one nine one nine one nine one nine. He said ten out of ten podcast. Great guest going for. That was on the twentieth of April. If that is your review, get in touch. You have won the signed Berahino at Royal Dutch Stoke Freddy. shirt. You can also have me and Craig sign it if you want. You know if that. Do you think that yeah, means anything? I I, I personally <laughs> think. I don't know about you, Al, but I think I'd massively devalue signing that shirt. But Freddie, if for some reason you do want me to sign it, let us know. But I'd recommend against it. Yeah, I'd probably. You can get that on eBay for a bit of money. To yeah, be honest, I'd, I'd probably say, it. but probably say don't. Yeah. Um, so do let us know uh, if that is you who've, who's won the shirt. Get in touch via YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, wherever you can. Wherever Acast. You can get all of us. Acast. That's one as well. Isn't it? Can you message people on Acast? Don't know. I don't know what it is to be honest, say cast. <laughs> you say we're on it. But, we're on it. I don't, mm. it. It just pulls it through from SoundCloud. I'm not yeah. sure how. Uh, but anyway, thank you for all those reviews throughout the season. Do leave another if you still haven't yet. You know, just we, imagine if we got to number one or got in the top ten. That'd be amazing, wouldn't top it? Top ten would be ace. That would be amazing. Well, like about Freddie's reviews, that was back in April. 
Yeah. So I'd like to think, I could be completely wrong, he did it through a genuine reason because he wanted to Not all these glory hunters glory hunters shirt. after this little shirt down here I like to think he did it because he really likes the podcast well it was random if you can go on YouTube and see Craig swiping uh, and even knocking off the, po- the app <laughs> at one point yeah. um, got there anyway but now we get on to the football Southampton at the weekend it's bloody one I did a watch along in Tenerife yeah I was, was that part? Tenerife Potters was that because I saw that and I thought you just found the random sports bar but it's a proper dedicated oh, no, no. Stoke it, well it was you know it was actually good, a good story uh, to listen to because I spoke to the guys and it's probably something worth any Stoke fans listening mm. to hear uh, so the guys that I spoke to uh, used to run the Boovham Sports Bar um, an official supporters club which okay. Angela Smith is I believe oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and there was an earthquake and the, the bar the building next door collapsed I remember that yeah I remember reading that in the press yeah, so they, had mm. to sh- they, they got their bar completely shut down it was unsafe yeah uh, even though it was the building next door and they've had no form of support from the club, which you, which you might expect. I'm not too sure. Or, you know, just it asked for like a signed shirt. To maybe yeah, something to help, because help them along. It's a year later or mm. a year and a half or so later now, and, and they've still not um, still not got their insurance or anything along those lines. So yeah. they've literally got no sort of no income or whatever they had before from running this bar, this Stoke Boovan bar. Mm. Um which is a terrible story to hear, and I said I'd try and do something myself, try and get them a signed shirt or something along those lines, you know, just anything to help. Yeah. When, uh, when did it occur, the earthquake? When was it? I think it was like about a year ago. About a year ago. Um, but yeah, really sad, sad, sad story. Uh, and it, uh, if anyone wants to also get in touch with the club and maybe ask, ask them or implore them to maybe help out in some way, please do. Mm. Um, but yeah, they've now relocated sort of their club and they're now in the Mega Bowl. It's not their place. They just they just hang the Stoke flags up. Oh, god! So it's so it's they, like they, a they've got a bar. Yeah, they've, they've got a bar to go to. The game about. gets put on. Yeah, great atmosphere. Some great people there. Um, we had a big picture at the end. We did a live stream from there. It wasn't. I had to tether my phone. A few for, technical difficulties. A few technical yeah. difficulties because the the internet wasn't great as it probably never got, not going to be in a, you mm. know, an underground bowling. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I ended up tethering my phone to my laptop. So I, that was oh, cheap, I wasn't it? I fucking can't wait to see my phone, but yeah. uh, to live stream. Um, it, it did okay. It was in one of your usual watch-longs. But we finally had a watch-long and we won. We won the thing. We yeah. scored as well. We scored. But the game itself, I thought we got battered. Uh, yeah, there's quite conflicting reports. Really. I mean, the one I'm people are saying, a win disguises a lot, doesn't it? I don't think we were horrendous by any means, but I think a draw would have been fair, and that's with my Stoke tinted glasses on. Yeah, even so, I wouldn't have called the Southampton win unfair. No. They absolutely battered us at some points, and Jack really saved If it wasn't for Jack, he was absolutely unreal. I was watching some of those saves thinking, do you know what, someone's going to come in for him now. It, they're, not it, gonna, they're not going to give it a if, if Jack Butland goes before at least January... I will, he'll, he'll drop in my estimations massively. He, he will. Yeah, he, he deserves to give deserves Stoke. To give us some time. Hundred percent. You know, he pays wages for a break. I know football's. You know, it, it, it's their job effectively, and it's a promotion maybe to move to a big glamorous club. But not the Stoke isn't glamorous. It's not particularly big. You've been Anley. <laughs> it's lovely. Yeah, they got some cracking night nightclubs apparently. But I think he What's owes us. What's your favourite nightclub, apparently? Um, it, it chopped and changed. I mean, my, my music taste is sort of like rocky and these sort of stuff. So it's Sugar Mill, The Underground, and The Exchange, mm. which is Fat Cats. Yeah. I've been a few times recently, which is quite good. Love a bit of house in there, no? Do they do house in there, do they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so them three. I think The Underground. Yeah, that's Probably gone holds. Has it? Yeah. Since when? Underground's gone. When? Shut down a couple of months ago. Oh, okay, well, that's, that's a shame. I mean, the sugar mill's all Showing right. Your age but it, here, Craig. it bounces. I swear I went under the ground not too long ago. It's closed now. Oh, well. They gave it a send off the other week, I remember. Did they? I like Revs. Only because they oh, do a Revs. picture of shambles. That's my favourite drink. What's that? A pint of um, champagne, right. red, red Bull, and vodka. That sounds bloody horrible. It's bloody gorgeous. It's fucking you, disgusting. And I, now. Me and my mates so always had a picture of that. Right. Sometimes two to yourself mm-hmm. in a night. Yeah, writes you off. It's absolute rock. That's just feel. dangerous. That is. Be careful. Yeah, responsible drinking and, and stuff. Yeah, Don't, yeah, drink responsibly. That's yeah, what it's, but that's what you're saying. Yeah, that's exactly. What Covered ourselves there. That's exactly what you say. Um, so yeah, uh, so Jack Stoke is glamorous. That's what we're saying. Jack Butland. I, yeah, he won't. He surely won't go before January. Do you know what? A lot of what he's come out and said seems like he wants to pay 
what from what I've seen, it seems like he wants to pay Stoke fans back for that he should period do. out. Uh, he should everything do. I've read, and he doesn't seem like he's even thinking about going. But some Man big, City need big a keeper. clubs. Man United will need a keeper if De Gea goes. Yeah. You could argue Arsenal need a keeper. Peter Jack's not been great. Liverpool. There's only so many young keepers and talented keepers. I you know. Can go well, for. there's a few. It's weird actually because Liverpool's a strange one. I've seen them that Labrooks have suspended betting on Arca Casillas to move to them today. That's a bit of a weird signing. Weird. That's a weird signing. That's interesting. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Briefly getting off Stoke, there was kind of a lack of depth with England's keepers. Like only a year ago, we've got loads coming through now. Yeah, you've got Jordan Pitford, you've got Fraser Forster, Forster you've got Tom Heaton. Butland as well. We've got a real Butland, kind of depth there. Joe Hart is still classed as the number one. Yes, somehow. Joe Hart's still fine. You know what? He's, not, he's awful. I think he's absolutely fine, Joe Hart. I think, I think his great. career was unfairly uh, forced down the wrong path by Guardiola. He's conceded. I don't remember the, the the number, but it's a ridiculous amount of goals at Torino this season. He's all right. They've lost like four or five nil in those games. He's all right, yeah. Um, anyway, back to Stoke. It reminds me in a lot of ways to the West Ham game from last season. We didn't play that well that game. Well, we we should have lost that game. We won. It papered over a lot of cracks going into the summer. And there is a, there's been like a, quite a good vibe around Stoke this week because, you know, a win will do a win, that. A win does that. But if truth be told, another day we probably lose that. The same negative vibe is there. We go into the summer with them same negative feelings. Yeah, I'd never, I'd never ever wish Stoke to lose a game. I wanted them to win that game mm-hmm. at the weekend. But Greg, who we did the uh, live stream with, he wanted us to lose. Did he? I, so, I, so you know, it won't make a difference. No matter if I had money on it, I still couldn't, I still couldn't bring myself to, to want Stoke to lose because, it's just. Bizarre. No, I Never. couldn't. I, couldn't. Years. I challenged Greg on the live stream. I said, you, "You want Stoke to lose this game?" He's like, "Yeah, I want Hughes gone, and that might do that. I want us to lose." So it means nothing to us. I appreciate the reason why, but it, even if I wanted Hughes to go himself, which I don't, I could still never find it within myself to w- watch a Stoke game. Yeah, and want, want to, to lose. lose. It's just no. It's impossible. It's, hot. it's it'd be too hard to do. It's not within you. How could you will that to happen? You couldn't, unless it was one of those weird situations like. You know what, Man City and Arsenal, and that where they end up supporting a rival to get, knock another team away from a Champions League spot. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, There's some, them ones where you can think, maybe. I remember Everton had to do it a while ago to try and get Liverpool out of the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, League. that to lose to Man City. Yeah, the yeah. Gerrard slip, yeah. I think, I think it was that, I'm yeah, not sure. But yeah, totally there's actually. those situations. Yeah, but nonetheless, that is... I mean, I don't really know Greg, so I'm not going to have a go at him. He's your mate, but that is a bit odd. <laughs> that is a bit odd, Greg. He's got, he's, got, he's had to stick on the live stream before to World Coast Testimonial. No, he wouldn't sing Delilah, even though no, like, everyone was asking him to in the comments. Why not? So everyone was giving him shit. Like, you asking him to start Delilah. Oh, I get that. Though. You've had that a few times. You know, someone puts the pressure on you to start Delilah. It's bloody nerve-wracking. It's horrible. Oh, it is. Just cowering in the corner. You don't want to do it. <laughs> It's, diff- Mess it up. it's difficult to just stand up in the middle of a crowd and do it. I remember this is, this is off topic slightly, but years ago I was in the Boven and um, some bloke started it, fair play, it was quite a bold move, he started it and his voice, you know when occasionally your voice goes dead high pitch for no reason? Yeah. Cause you get, <gasps> yeah, yeah, he did that right in the middle, <laughs> poor bloke, and he got absolutely destroyed. He had, he had to take that a seat and sit, it. yeah, yeah, it was flipping hilarious. Poor fella. Jesus, yeah. Jesus. And there was also another highlight from the game. Like Peter Crouch obviously scored the win. How much do you love Crouch? He's fucking mint. He, he grows and grows and grows in estimation as a he person, said, he as a Stoke player. He said this week, week love it. he wants love to it. play until he's 40. And, and he could do. He could because his game's not about it's pace. Never it's never been about being pace. a big bastard. Getting quicker, And he's always going to be a big bastard. So he's <laughs> yeah. about 80 and he starts shrinking. Yeah, exactly. Go on, keep <laughs> yeah. go on until he's 80. And even then, he'll probably be six foot at worst, right? Yeah. He? So yeah, you could go on to I, his I, 80, I, I'm going to say. I forget who now, but a mate of mine, Jay from Ball Street, is a QPR fan. And there's a coach, because he started at QPR, who said that Peter Crouch is going to be at his peak in his mid to late 30s. Because mm. that's when his game, he's going to develop his game, he's going to be his most experienced, pace is irrelevant, it doesn't matter. And I truly think that, and I'm going to quote the old OK message board here, because I always always yeah. browse it, despite yeah. the tat that's on it. You do. But a load of people were moaning that an old player was leading the line still. They were moaning, and then, well, in Crouch's case, age is so irrelevant. I don't know why that's an issue in Crouch's. I know what case. you mean. I know what you mean. Um, he'd never be my first. Like, I don't I, want him to be first. No, I don't want him to lead the line. But I, I don't I have no problem when he does start. I have no problem with him starting up front with someone. And for me, Berahino and Crouch in two up front is the strike force. I'd be more than happy to go with next year. The front two, definitely. Big man, little man. Yeah, definitely. I, f- I know he didn't quite work at Swansea. He had one go at Swansea away, but th- that can work that, definitely. You think? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, so the other Peter Crouch highlight was at the game, <laughs> yeah. end of the game, 
Brill. Speedos. Speedo, man. Right, and took his uh, to Tyrone, Tyrone Sidley. Do you know him? I've, we've actually interviewed him on Bear Pet TV in Hamburg before. He was oh, right. said, asked him for a score prediction. He went 100 nil. 100 nil. Oh, cheers, mate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> but um, fair play. Got his kit off. I'd never have done that photo shoot outside my house in my pants. No, it's quite a bold move, wasn't that it? That is a fucking bold. He's got balls. He has got balls. I could see, see him through the speedos. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, got he, balls. He has definitely got balls. But I thought the snorkel was a nice little touch to the outfit. Yeah. Because I heard about Peter it. Peter Crouch sucked on it. He did, which is. I bet he regretted that instantly. I know you think. Has this lad had his, had his mouth from this? I guarantee beer had been poured down that. Front. So, yeah. Maybe def- that's why that Crouch 100% that's it. happened. 100% beer was done in that snorkel. Yeah. Like a, a shot. Yeah. But I heard about that story before the actual day. And I thought, yeah, fair enough, that's, that's quite funny. And um, But when when actually saw the snorkel, I thought, he's pulled it off, well played. So, fair play to Speedo Man. Hats off, I wouldn't have done Hats it. Hats off. None of us would have done that. No chance, not in a million years. And like we said, he's got some balls. <laughs> yeah, we can he's confirm he's definitely got some balls. <laughs> right, so now we get on to the season review. Mm. Okay, we've got a few categories that me and Craig are going to go through. They are, we'll both give our own, some of them might be the same. Uh, let's get straight, straight in there. What was the best game? You know what? We, we went through these categories at the start. I think, yeah, that sounds good. I've not thought about it at all. Have you got a best one? It needs to be two minutes <laughs> to think of one. That'd be many. Best game for me. You might inspire me. Um, even though we were lost, if it, if we like a game as an atmosphere, and yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I'm gonna have to say when we lost to Chelsea four two. I was. Eve. I didn't go there. I was in France. Yeah, was it, it was, all right, was it? Yeah, because we, we had a couple of mentals, and uh, Zach came over from America. Mm. It was before he got his bag nicked, um, <laughs> so you know it was good. And then it was, uh, even though we lost, it was still New Year's Eve. Went back mine, had a big party, and the atmosphere at the game as well. Even though we lost, we scored a couple of goals. We had them mm. for a while. It just sort of. I suppose you went in that atmosphere. I mean, Chelsea way that the good expectation away. was low anyway, and you'd. have in a way, obviously you'd want to win at all times, but the fact we scored to peg them back twice was almost justifiable. Yeah. Almost justified the ticket price. Yeah, and then at the end of the day, Chelsea went on and won the league. And the second the second mental for the goal that we scored when Bruno scored, mm-hmm. I was still in the turnstiles with loads of fans. Loads of fans hadn't gone back out yet. Mm. And there was this massive mental in the, yeah. turns, in the concourse. Beer everywhere, soaked. But it was just, it was just mint. That's they're the moments that you sort of go, the, yeah, go the away games. That, that is good. That's like that. I've got one. I, I was torn between two. I think Hull away was just a, a good day out. Yeah. But I think when Arnie scored his second and Stoke's third at Sunderland away, that was ace. Because Stoke, the gem of this season has been quite poor, and it's rare you'll ever be three nil up within was it half an hour or whatever it was. In fact, we three nil away from home after that mammoth journey. Because I, I got up at stupid o'clock. I got a train from London. at I don't know, like half five in the morning to get the bus from back home yeah. up to Sunderland. Sunderland. It, was, it was such a mission of a journey and it was well justified. Yeah, that was brilliant. Then we went out after. And it was called the sexy football goal. The sexy football goal. Yeah, yeah, that was that was class. That'll do. Worst game. I know, I know what mine is. Um, it was Tottenham 4-0. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably go with that. Although they they have been classed this season. In, in hindsight, now it's no one's. They haven't even lost them, the, have they? No, but like that that game, it was just it, we were four 0 down in the first half. Yeah, it no, like, it was shit. It was, like, it, it was. Oh my god! And then we went in the concourse, and again, everyone stayed in the concourse. Everyone was just we're not going back out, and we literally I don't think we went back out until about. 20 minutes to go. I remember that. I went, with my, beers. I went with my brother Lee and uh, my mate Mark. They, they literally went at 30 minutes. Yeah, you they said, left the they ground. They left the ground. And you start, you I stayed. just stood there on my own. I had the worst tickets ever, which was right on the, the barrier next to Spurs fans. So it's not like I was even mingling with Stoke fans. I was just, I just stood in the sea of Tottenham fans getting stick. Um, but in hindsight, Spurs are class. A lot of teams have got done there. And I have to look back at probably Palace away. Yeah, because they're a team that we, you know, we should be competing with if nothing else. And we were turned over that day. It was already, it was nil. kind of the cherry on the. Was it four 0 Was it four one? Four one. I scored in the last minute. Four Good goal, actually. <laughs> but it was the cherry on the kind of the cake of the most horrendous start, Premiership start anyway we've had. Yeah. And I, I, I truly worried that day for we might be in a big relegation battle. Yeah, it, it, I was in. I had methods to cope with that because I was in Amsterdam watching that. So yeah, I bet you did. You know. There's ways to go over that. Coffee, boss. the scenery. Coffee, yeah, the scenery. Plenty of A little things. bike ride. Plenty of things. Things. Yeah, bike that. ride. Um, so that's the worst. You've gone for Palace, I've gone for Tottenham. Mm-hmm. Uh, best player this season. Lee Grant won the Players Player uh-huh. of the Year. 
I get, is that your best player? Yeah, I kind of. It's a weird one. I, I I give it to Lee Grant. This is going to sound ridiculous. I don't think he's been our best player, but I think we got very very lucky that he was able to step up. Third choice championship keepers shouldn't be able to step up that comfortably to the Prem, and yeah, we struck so gold well. and do so well, and we struck gold. I'd arguably say that Bruno's probably been our best player. That's who my vote is. But I'm going to give it to Grant because he punched well and truly above his expectations. Mm. Well and truly. And I think if it wasn't for him performing so well and stepping up so well, we'd have comfortably been in a relegation battle. Yeah. So I'm Lee gonna, Grant for me. Lee Grant for you. I'm going to say Bruno. Mm. Uh, I hate when goalkeepers get it because it just shows how bad the team's been. Yeah, no, no, I get that. Although I think Butlin was probably it last year, wasn't it? Yeah, he did. Which says a lot two again. Years in a row. Uh, so, but Bruno just set it up at the back. He came, he was an absolute leader. Um, his defensive work, top notch. Yeah, he was. He seemed, he's he class. Seemed, he's class. He seemed to be the partner that we've been screaming out for yeah. since Hoof left uh, to go up with Ryan. And he scored that goal at Chelsea as well. That just was your highlight this season. It's yeah. my highlight. But yeah, Bruno solidified it at the back for mm-hmm. us. Um, and you, you can't say that Lee Grant did a wonderful job, and he did. And he's got the players player, and some people say deservedly so. But I think a lot of that was also down to Bruno coming in. Yeah, they came in about the same time, didn't they? Came in about the same time. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll put it down. I like I want to put it down. I think you can Bruno. combine the two and say, bar it for Bruno and, and Grant, it's, this season could have been very, very depressing. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. sign. You can't, I mean, you, you have to give Mark Hughes the credit for both of them. We give enough stick. Or yeah. his back Grant team. We haven't got them in, but we give you know the team enough stick. But that was well played by the management team, really, wasn't it? Yeah. To get in a, a keeper like that and, and then Bruno alone. Done well. Mm. Worst player. Um, <sighs> Mine's Hogard. <laughs> will he? Will he? Did he even play this year? But he was. He played it. He, uh, he was so bad. To challenge him, I forget. Jacob Hogard was so bad. Conceded so many goals. Racked to stick. Shea given in. He was 168 years old, and then we shipped him off to Wigan, and he was awful there. Is it genuinely Hogard you're giving? Yeah, he's not even played though. Yeah, he's got. Well, He's not the reason to... for the start of season slump. I feel like there should be a game limit to, to being justified and nominated. Well, like winning a Premier League medal, you have to have you have to yeah, play so many you games. You need to play at least five or league games. In my worst player, there's no there's no limits, and I'm giving it to <laughs> right. harsh, harsh. Poor I'm fella. giving it him. I'm giving it him. He, um, I mean, he, don't get me wrong. If you had played that, I highly doubt he would have changed your mind from what I've seen so far. But poor fella, was he? Well, he was just fucking. He awful. could really influence what, 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 it from Wigan. How you made that? Signing. I don't know. It's just awful. And then not only was he shy for us, he went alone to Wigan and he was shy there. Fans lambasted him. He saved a penalty in his first game, mm. just hit a few, just masked a few of the prob- many yeah. problems for Jacob Ogard. And then he's gone to Wigan. And then came the bizarre situation where the manager said he's like a Sunday league keeper. But because Stoker didn't put this clause and he has to play so many games or they have to pay him back so, so much money, right, okay, yeah, yeah. he somehow mysteriously got injured and had to come back on loan. Right. Come back to Stoke. Makes sense. That's how bad he is. He couldn't cut it. In, he couldn't <laughs> cut it in the championship. Injury. They'd rather faked an be injury. a keeper down. Yeah, and have to play him. Exactly. Right. Absolutely <laughs> yeah. awful player. Okay. He's coming back to us this season. It'll be interesting to see what happens. He won't be anywhere near the first game. Uh, my worst player. Is it difficult? I don't. I hate to be too critical of Stoke players because, you know, they play for my club. Looking up and down the squad, Eric's not had the best of seasons. Eric's had an awful season. If I wasn't so, if I, you know, the game limit rule, that would that be my that would be Eric. Would it? But I'm going to probably say Eric. I'll get absolutely slaughtered. Bar this last month and a half, I think Shaq is massively underwhelmed, massively. Um, that could get a bit of stick, but yeah, probably, probably Eric. Really, I mean, I'm trying, trying to think of the squad now. No one's been abysmally shy that they need to be called out, but Eric's definitely been. The, the most inconsistent I'd say this year he's, he's been awful at times <laughs> yeah, I say consistent I'm being polite <laughs> yeah I'll come you are being, he's been way too polite Craig. I just need Walshard to come out then I'd have a, an easy candidate for my work Walshard's player. coming back we're not we're not keeping Bruno I mean it, it, based on your rules of giving it to players that don't even play for Stoke after season I'll give it Walshard again because <laughs> he hasn't it, played any but we, I mean what did Hogarth play though the League Cup four or five I swear giving came straight in but yeah Eric Peters for me Four or five games he had. Absolute joke. Shouldn't, I don't know how we got that many. I don't know how we got that many. Who's your most improved player? Um, I really have not planned this podcast, Al. I know I'm mine. thinking right. You go again and give me a few minutes. Sorry. I think he's um, come on leaps and bounds from 
No, he's come from an Egyptian league where, let's be honest, the standard's cack. Mm. Absolutely cack. Um, Hello to our Egyptian listeners. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> shit, we've got, a few, we've got a few, haven't we? Yeah, we um, love The it. Egyptian league is great. It's brilliant. Craig. It's improving all the time. It's improving isn't it? all the time. That's what I like about it. Zamalek and the guys, mm. great. Al Ali, top top bunch. Top club. Um, top but he's come from Egypt, where the standards not amazing. Uh, and he has not looked out of place one single bit in the Premier League. Yeah. And if not, never mind out of place. He's been our best player in some in a lot of games he's played. And it's an absolutely baffling decision why he was dropped until it's mad, the it? last game of the season. I don't imagine this is a category in our season review, but if there was a frustrating point of the season, it would be why is Sobe not played more. Yeah, we haven't got that. We haven't got that one down. I'm going to introduce it quickly. Frustrating point of the season, the lack of Sobe. Yeah. Bizarre. Definitely. Can't so go around that. He's unreal. Um, and if Shaq or Arnie were to go this summer, he'd have no problem sort of stepping in. Easily. I, th- I think he was... You know, you could comfortably argue that he should have been starting for at least one of them several yeah. times this season. Especially Arnie. Arnie tailed off a bit there towards the end. I think he, he could should have come in from really. But who's your most improved? Not that he was ever rubbish, but purely comparing him to last season, it's got to be Crouchy. Crouchy. How many goals did he score last year? Was it? I don't think he scored a league goal last year. I could be wrong. Maybe it I know it wasn't many. I think he maybe scored the odd goal in the cup, and I, I really would that the the tail end of Crouchy's Stoke career was starting towards the back end of last year, but he's come in 10 goals in all competitions, did the robot, hit 100 goals, just continues to, to be more and more of a legend for the club. And yeah, compared to last season, he's massively improved. Massively, massively. And uh, I absolutely adore Peter Crouch, hero. Don't we all? Yeah. Don't we all? So that's your most improved. It's, it's a strange most improved. It's a strange one because I, I've probably slightly... 36-year-olds don't usually... <laughs> you know, you, this is your young ones who are doing yeah, change yeah. the game. 36-year-old <laughs> most, most improved. Yeah, I've taken that quite slightly out of context because he was never bad, obviously, but purely compared to last season, he, he has had a better season. Next one. Manager rating out of 10. Um, are we doing halves? Can we do halves? Half and a half if you want. Five crying. and a half. Five and a half. Five and a half. Frustrated with his inability to keep the same formation. His subs continue to kind of baffle me. And I'm so frustrated that Sobi wasn't played more. I was so frustrated that Afalai didn't play more when he came back, although maybe he wasn't quite fit in hindsight. And I'm frustrated that Shaq hasn't been playing the number 10 role more often. Mm-hmm. Five and a half out of 10. I'll go four. Four out of 10. I didn't expect a plus five from you. I'll shave a, I'll shave a one and a half points off your score. Mm. All of the above what you said, and just it's been a shit season. There's been not many highlights. No. Um, we went out to both the cups in the first round to teams that are both in the championship next season at home. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just not been much joy to it. The Bojan situation as well. Bojan si- Get letting people Bojan. go that we should still be at the club mm-hmm. doing brilliant things in La Liga or Bundesliga when we're struggling for a mm. fucking goal then the Ibula situation whether that's Hughes' fault or not I don't I, know Ibula but... um, again tactical ineptitude in games where it seems so bloody obvious to so many people what needs to be done and you know it, 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 the amount of times when we were just saying D- does Mark use rem- no you can use substitutes mm. that happens so many times this season then I remember um, I think Liverpool at home we were winning 1-0 and if he was injured, I'll completely remove this point. But I remember him taking Walters off. He was battering their defence at the time. Mm. And instantly turned around. It was a bizarre choice. No, he, got, he did get slated for that. Was, would you bring Wheeler up? I think so. We should not mind. We need, you know, that's fine. That's fine. But but he was clearly the, the player that was leading our line at that particular time. He took him off. Bizarre. Mm. It really stands out as me. It's one of his worst choices. There was there was plenty of, yeah, like I say, baffling. Not a, not a big rating. Uh, Mark Bowen and Hughes have all come out and said that they know they've not had a great season change mm-hmm. up, change will be coming which leads us on to our next question of the uh, season what change is needed for next season what change we need to go into pre-season we need to have two plans a formations plan A and a plan B a philosophy we need to have yeah a main philosophy and then a secondary philosophy and we need to stick with these philosophies and not chop and change I in my 30 years, I could say Sporting Stoke, I don't know if I've supported him since I was zero, but actually, I don't know. I don't know. It so might... came out the womb going, <laughs> Sadie! My dad put a scarf straight around my neck. Um, but yeah, in, in my years of Sporting Stoke, I've never, 
if I had the time and I was nerdy enough, I'd love to work at every single different formation and players played within the season. I bet there's dozens upon dozens of combinations. We've got to get a couple of philosophies and stick to them, play players in the right positions and go forward with that. And one of them specifically is Berahina must be played up top with another striker. That has to happen. That's what you want to happen. That's what I want to happen, yeah. definitely, because it doesn't work on its own. We've seen that with how many strikers have been in that lone striker position. Lowe's, Juf, Yosselu, Crouch, Berahino, uh, Walters. It doesn't work. We do not create chances with that one lone striker. Mm. We need to go with a new formation that gets the most out of these strikers. They can't all be shit. And they all <laughs> they look can't. shit in this formation. Yeah, they can't, they all, can't be all be shit. They can't be all shit. So that's, that's what I'd change. My change? Be the manager. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. Um, no, it's seriously, I think the boat's gone uh, for that. I don't think if it, if they were getting rid of Hughes, they'd have done it by now. No, no, he'll be here next year. I definitely. do feel like I still all my points stand. I feel like there won't be enough change to um, enough change to sort of make a big reaction mm. to spark a spark a new feeling or essence around the club and the players. Yeah, I, I do understand. I don't. I don't think that all. I don't. I, I think we needed that. Um, if when you just keep it the same instead, mm-hmm. it, it, a lot of the same things will carry over. They won't. They won't feel that much change to the players. Some people can come in and out the door. Mm-hmm. It still won't be enough change to really change it. And I th- again, I've said this before already, but if he has the same start he has every other season, he'll be gone. He'll be gone anyway. Hundred percent. Yeah. He'll be gone anyway by November. And yeah. then, we're, then we're then we're playing catch up, and we yeah. get a new manager in, and we just got to hope we stay up then. Mm-hmm. So that's another season gone. But it looks like it's not happening. Um, Mark Hughes will stay, so I'll get 100% get behind the team, get behind the club, yep. get behind the manager if that's what's happening. And if I was to go off what's changes needed then, I'd say we need to get some full-backs in. We need to either mm-hmm. secure the Bruno deal or get a brand new full uh, Is brand the new Bruno deal back. going tits up? The yeah. Bear Pit reported yeah, today. It, is. So it looks like it's going tits up because shame. Porto are losing uh, a centre-back, I can't remember his name, Philippe to Juve yeah that um, was it a good, good defender and also one of my managerial targets if we were to get rid of Mark Hughes Marco Silva seems to be going to Porto he's going to be the Porto manager uh, and he will keep hold of Bruno mm. but no doubt about that's that. such a shame it's annoying because instantly you're kind of you're one behind with your transfer dealings then if Bruno was in, you can move on to the next position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost sets you back, doesn't it, a little bit? You know how long a transfer can drag on. So keep Bruno, get in another central midfielder because we're going to lose Giannelli and Buller, it seems. Mark Hughes needs to bite the fucking bullet and say that Bojan's a good player and start building a team around him. That's one other thing mm. that he needs to I do. I do worry that ship sailed. I, I re- said it. Honestly, yeah, I, really worry that that, I really worry that Bojan comes back and gets sold. I think that'd be a huge, huge mistake. I'd rather get rid of Mark Hughes than Bojan. I, honestly, he's he's been running the show once he's got into the rhythm of it at Mainz, mm. which shows he can do it. So if it, just get him back into the rhythm at Stoke, play, get, get him as number 10, get yeah. to the top or whatever, it will fucking Re- Reverting work. back to my creative category of frustrating point this season is the inability to kind of give Bojan some consistent game time. Uh, yeah, exactly. In and out, in and Mark out. Drop, Mark start, Hughes yeah. has come out and said that it was a mistake sending on loan. Mm. He's bit the bullet there, so hopefully he can bite the bullet and just came back in his team. Hopefully. I uh, really hope so. And probably I'd get a striker. Either get Josh Slew back and get rid of Juf, maybe. Or either buy another. If you're playing two up front, you need some options. Mm-hmm. You don't want John Walters, Crouch, Berahino, Mama Juf. Mm. They aren't four out and out. Strikers, I don't think. No. I don't think they're a good selection. I, I still think if it's better, he if better, you know, does click, there is a decent strike striking partner within that cluster of people. But I do understand where you're coming from. But we probably need a, a fresh up slightly. Yeah. Highlight of the season. Oh bloody hell! I'll go first because you have not thought about <laughs> these crazy. Yeah. My highlight was Peter Crouch in the robot. Yeah, it was good because we campaigned for it mm. and it worked. We brought the hashtag bring back the robot. Went everywhere. Stoke tweeted it. BBC Sport. Um, loads of bloody places. Crouch did an interview saying he was going to do it, and he ended up doing it. Yeah, I like to think that we influenced that. I like that. A, a season of many lows. I do think the Crouch robot was a universal good, good will. Every, yeah, good feeling. That wasn't just for Stoke fans. That was, it was for wicked. Everyone and everyone loves Peter Crouch. He's done the robot in a few shirts, but it's nice to see that his most most capped club, yeah. most goal scored club, Stoke City. He's done it. His famous uh, dance move in the colours of Stoke City. Yeah, that, that was good. Stuff. 
I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm struggling now, but I'm gonna just nick yours. Yeah, Crouchy, it was great. I mean, there's not much. The fact that a, a dance moves making a highlight of the season says it all about the season. But yeah, I think Crouchy's dance will, will top it for me. Um, yeah, that was all right, wasn't it? It was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. So there, or oh, that is our review of the season. Should we give it a number out of ten as well? What the season? The season go yeah, on. as a whole. Um, I'm gonna give it a. <laughs> I just I could say a five and a half out of ten, <laughs> but it just seems so right. I'm not being lazy there because I gave you used that. But that's what it feels like. Five and a half out of ten. It was. It it, it it was obviously below what we've had in the Premiership before, but I always come back to the context thing. I know you hate this argument, but we've been a lot worse, and we was we were two points off eighth. And if you look at the gap between Everton and everyone below, I think it was 15 points from 7th to 8th. By the philosophy that we're being a bit down about Stoke's season, every club from maybe 8th to Watford has had a shit season, really, by, by the standards of what they could have expected. So why should we feel any more you know, aggrieved? I don't think it's about the position. It's, it's more about the football mm. and what we're watching. You could we could have finished we could have got those three points in a game where we got turned over say Leicester two two at home we we somehow held that, out that, and won it and we'd be eighth now you know what it wouldn't change a lot of the season the, the, yeah, quickly change it the lowest point at the moment was Leicester at home I say that was fucking awful <laughs> you've reminded that was awful yeah. awful awful moment it was awful <laughs> right so now we are on to the viewers slash followers questions oh shit I didn't give my review I give it a two. The season, season. Yeah. that might give the season a two. Thought you might, yeah, Thought it you might. wasn't great at all. There wasn't many highs, plenty of lows. Right, questions, questions from the people. What do you think went wrong with Boney and Bula and Bojan? Was it all down to Hughes? Boney, um, you can only assume that because all three have had little and snipes he, in the press, and he's got them all in. Yeah, and he's got them all. In. Yeah, yeah. You, you've you've got no other option or evidence suggests it's anything but Hughes's fault that they didn't work. Be it personality class. Clash and inability to make them work and play to their strengths. Bonnie's come out in the press, had a little dig. And Bula's had several. I think Bojan has here and there as well. Slash the rumour of a bit of a bust up. I can only say yes to that question. Yeah, I, I think the same. I don't think he, he knows how to get the best out of some of those players. Mm. Um, if you, if Wilfred Boney, when we signed him, we all went, we all went mental. Um, and I listen to the Front Free podcast often, and Dave. Uh, Statman Dave who on that they, they did their own review of every Premier League team mm. and he said something that stuck out for me quite a bit he said they've done it, Stoke have done it with a lot of strikers now the strikers come in and out um, and they don't know how to make the best of them it's it's exactly Wilfred, what I was saying, it says it? Wilfred yeah. Boney how can you not get him to score goals if you build a team around him yeah. and have him up top he will put them away yeah and he did in that one game, and then you know he didn't score in another. And it does make you think: if are we are we not creating the opportunities? Yeah, I said it what five minutes ago. I forgot Boney from my list of strikers that isn't working this formation. And another example: the Boney one was so bizarre. I when he came in, he wasn't scoring much, but he was playing very well. I thought he was holding the ball up amazing, bringing in the wingers, scored a couple against Swansea. I thought here we go, he's going to start now. Had an all right his game against West Ham, bombed out. Never seen again. Never seen again. I don't have a clue why. It was some, some massive, massive mystery. Something's going on. It's a strange massive one. mystery. A strange one. Sam Richards says, "Can we push for a Europa League place next season? And what sort of players would we need to bring in to do so? To do that, we'd have to spend a lot of money. Mm. We'd have to not only bring in players at positions that probably mentioned before. We'd have to spend top money and get some ex- some experienced players in those yeah. positions." Um, I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to be a big, big ask, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's, gonna, this season. it's a big summer. It's a really big summer. It's a, it's a massive summer, depending on who we bring in, who we let go, um, and Mark Hughes. It's a huge summer for the club. We spend in the wrong places. We continue the football we're playing. It's a relegation fight next mm. season. Because, like I say, there isn't a catalyst for change by keeping the manager. So there's got to be some drastic changes. Yeah. A few signings here and there, letting your Charlie Adam, letting your Phil Bardsley's go, replacing them with just some average players won't work. Mm. It will not work. Ian Seedon says, if a ridiculous offer of 30 million plus comes in for Butland, do we cash in? No, because his value is only going to grow. I think he's worth more than 30 million already. I, I think it's it's a, obviously a very substantial, decent offer, but I think he could be still worth that this time next year. More than likely, I more. Think, I, think so I, think, I think he's worth more already. I, I think he's 40, 50 million region already when you've got keepers like Donnarumma, who's 18, who's 
playing well, still making cock-ups here and there, being touted at over 100 million mark as a young goalkeeper. Butland, who's played at international level, level performed on the bi- a bigger stage more regularly. Mm. For me, he's t- 40, 50 million, 60 million. England international as well. You know how much England pl- interna- England pl- English players Cast, get yeah. added onto the value. But no, his, his value's going to grow. But no, I still don't cash in. Not yeah. yet. Stephen Hubbard, with the way we run as a football club, but with the tight budget and wage caps, will we end up victims of our own downfall because of the way modern football is going? Great question. Um, I, potentially, but I, I got the impression that the, the strict wage budget, we'd slightly loosen that. Because remember we had that 40 grand cap for ages, we won't go above that. Yeah. I get the impression that must have been sma- well, it has been smashed through recently. Um, I don't know how tight this cap is still. If you look um, at players it's like, got to have been raised with players like Shakiri. Yeah, whether we're still below the likes of West Ham and West Brom, I, I don't know. I, no, I think we've been very sensible with it. Very sensible with it. I really respect the way Coates has implemented that kind of wage cap. I, I, I know it's raised slightly, but I, I, I don't want to turn to the club. A mid-table, who is it? Like Palace are playing silly money. Palace are playing and spending silly money. I, I swear, is that my right thing? They were paying 100 grand for Ben Teke. That's fucking ri- ridiculous. How much do you need? I mean, look at them 14th. No, I think continue with what we're doing. I think it's sensible um, and be realistic. You, you've got to be clever when you're in mid-table. You can't be privileged. Depends what we want. If we want to stick around mid-table, yeah, we can go the way we're going. I think we should raise it a little, a little bit. I'm not saying go mental. I'm mm. not saying go stupid, but... If you want to bring in the top players who want to push on for Europa League, you're going to have to spend some money. You're going to have to raise the wage bill a bit. And then is that, you completely appreciate the kind of the chairman's dilemma because you, you spend millions and millions more to get eighth. Oh yeah, well they've done seventh, that. Seventh, done, done that this season. I mean, bro. look, look at some of the team like what, Crystal Palace, fourteenth. Again, silly money on wages. You know, we spent eighty million on Mbula, and what's happened there? Well, I don't think he'll give him that money again this no. summer. No. Mark you've already said he won't be getting 30 million mm. to spend on one player uh, Tom Nicklin says I think we're going to have a terrible summer transfer window would you agree <laughs> I, 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 I I'm of the same thought I went to school with someone called Tom Nicklin I don't know if that's him Is this Although a profile he, was, he was a Villa fan so I don't it's know a, why it's a man holding a barbed wire bat he's from um, a Walking Dead series isn't he? Uh, so it's not the one you went to school with uh, that's definitely not him no that's, <laughs> that's an actor Um so he just thinks we're going to have a turn, I, I don't know, I, you can only kind of hypothesise at the moment. I, I can't begin to answer that, who knows? I can't, who knows? So I can't answer that, it's because I can't read into the future. So I'm sorry. You can. <laughs> Nobody can, apart from this fella. Um, and lastly, Jack Klaus says, when will Craig become Hughes out? What will it take? I'll, a simple answer to that one. If we are in the bottom three come... Late September, early October, that's when. It's quite after so that's when you turn. Yeah. What about a bad summer? What if you see a bad summer transfer window? Um, Does that turn you? No. No? No. Because we'll definitely sign players, and then you can't really judge any of these signings until the season starts. So, friendlies are relevant to me, they always have been. We will sign people, and you can't ever judge a player in precincts friendly. So, summer's, it's almost like a free pass. Okay. For the pressure on the manager. Okay, so you go if he has a normal Mark Hughes start. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's when you basically. Switch. That's yeah. when you switch. Yeah. Got it there, ladies and gents. That one, Craig's. That's when Craig's. Join the dark side. He's clock watch. Come and sit on that side. Yeah, that's when you. That's when you. <laughs> join the dark side. Yeah. Um, so that's questions done. Wrapped up. There's no game to preview this weekend. The 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 summer's finished. FA Cup. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We're not, yeah we're not, we're not, <laughs> Craig, sorry. we're not in it. Craig, we're not in the FA Cup. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought I was doing the other podcast. Great touch for Big Lad, which is also a good oh, football a podcast. Lad again, <laughs> hey, they aren't number 56 in the charts. No, we, we don't want to be. <laughs> we don't want, we don't want to be below that. Um, <laughs> right. So, instead, what's to come for the pod this summer? Well, the viewers, listeners can sort of decide that. Mm. We can do whatever you want. But I'm going to be going out to Switzerland um, I'm going to plan to do some there that's around the start of July mm-hmm. I think it's July like the 12th of July 10th of July so I'll be going and doing podcasts from there and then we'll probably kick it back into shape over pre-season when the transfer rumour mill starts transfer rumour mill all that sort of stuff I'll be going out to Germany if they ever get round to fucking announcing it <laughs> you know RB Leipzig must not sign that must I'll be hovering the pen over that contract yeah. just wait oh, oh. but yeah We'll, we will we'll do pre-season. Uh, there might be some transfer ones. You know, if we make a big signing, etc., we can do it around that. Mm-hmm. But you let us know. Send us in some tweets. 
leave it on the Facebook, leave it on the YouTube, wherever. Let us know what podcast you want to do over the summer because we're quite receptive. Yeah, you know, we both live down in London. We we're can both in London. Up. We can do it often. We we don't care. We can no. always get the beers in. We yeah. don't mind. We yeah. don't mind. So just let us know. Let us know, please. And also, again, leave us some five star reviews. Yeah, Let's get us up that chart. That's it. Thank you as well for listening. Thank you for everyone to listening throughout the season. Obviously, we've only been going. It's only the fourteenth episode. episode. We've we been made going. The, we've made the top sixty. That is pretty fucking. Good. That is good going. Isn't Fourteen it? episodes in, we're in the top sixty. Yeah, that is good, isn't it? So thank you to everyone who is listening. Thank you to everyone who has given us reviews. Uh, go and tell your mates. Get more people on board for next season. Uh, hopefully, it's a good one for the Potters. Uh, and we will see you and you will listen to us soon. Yeah. That's a weird sign-off, isn't it? It is a little bit, but it's fine. We yeah. get the picture. Okay. So we'll see you all later. Ta-ra.